live out here in the middle of the Arizona desert. Obviously, we don't have broadband, so internet has been one of our primary concerns. When we first moved out here in 2019, we started with this Verizon MiFi device. It was okay to begin with, but it really started to suck. Maybe it was over congestion on the cell towers or something. Very unreliable, very slow. So after this, we upgraded to T-Mobile's home internet. That was way better, way more reliable and faster. I just did a speed test the other day and we got like 25 megabits per second down, which for cell isn't bad. But we spend our lives online. I do a lot of podcasts and stuff through Zoom over the internet and I still need something faster. Hence, Starlink. There's a lot of Starlink unboxing videos on YouTube and I'm gonna make my own. Hey. <laughs> Pepper's helping. So the base installation comes with this four prong tripod or stand. Every single one of them comes with that and the dish with the cable already connected to it. There we go. It snaps into place like that. And as you can see, this is a rectangle dish. Starlink started with a round dish, but there were some problems with the heat, especially in hot summer desert climates like ours. So this is the next version. This is like the Gen 2 version, which is supposed to withstand way more temperatures, way higher temperatures. So I'm hoping that's the case. And this is the supplied router that comes with it. Really, everything here is pretty simple. You have the dish, you have the router, you have the stand, and 75 feet of cable. And on the end of the cable, you have the nifty little connector here that makes it super easy. There it is. Oh. Just connects right in. Penny's curious now too. Everyone's helping. You're making this difficult, dogs. <laughs> the router also comes with a power cable, but this cable is called a power over ethernet cable, which means the router is going to deliver power mode. <laughs> the router comes with its own power cable, but this cable is called a power over ethernet cable, which means it'll deliver power from the router to the satellite dish, move away through this cable. So you don't need to plug this into a power source, which is nice. It's just this cable. And last but not least, it also comes with this instruction sheet on this piece of like cardboard, which shows the process of setting up your satellite, connecting it to the router, and then setting up your network, your Wi-Fi network on your cell phone. So I'm gonna do all that now and show you what that looks like. We've temporarily set up the satellite dish out in our center courtyard. I stress that's only temporary. It comes with the mount as, quite frankly, that's just a temporary mount, although I suppose you could use it, but I think we're gonna mount it on top of the house eventually, but for now, we just wanted to get this set up and going and make sure it works for us. So it's out there right now. The next step is to download the Starlink app, connect to the network, and set things up that way. So let's get to it. All right, start setup. Next, open Wi-Fi settings, connect to the temporary Starlink network that comes by default. Now I will create the new network name. Now I've created the new network, so now you have to disconnect from the default Starlink network and reconnect with the network that you just created. All right, I'm joining now. All right, I have successfully joined the network. So now back to the Starlink app. All right, now it is booting up, which means it's gonna be finding the satellites outside. So you might see the satellite dish move around a little bit. So the whole setup process took about five or six minutes. But once it was set up, um, we started doing some speed tests, our very first speed test on the phone. Uh, we got between 80 megabits and 120 megabits down and between like six and 10 megabits up. I did one on the computer, 160 megabits down. What I'm gonna do over the next few hours is just take a bunch of speed tests and get a feel for how fast this is gonna be. But keep in mind that it takes the Starlink dish about 12 hours, 10 to 12 hours to fully calibrate to where it's at and the alignment of it in relation to the satellites and all that good stuff. So keep that in mind. What you see right off the bat, right after you first install it, isn't necessarily going to be what you see for the duration of your time with Starlink. So I'm going to continue doing that and I will report back to you 
with some more concrete findings and my general impressions of using Starlink in a couple days. I've got to use Starlink for several days now, and here are my general impressions. There are both pros and cons. And there are as many cons as there are pros, by the way, so it's not all just roses and dandelions. There are, there are some negatives with Starlink, at least in our case. So let's do pros first. The first pro is Starlink was very easy to set up. Within about 10 minutes, we were running. So all we had to do was set up the satellite dish outside, plug it into the router, the router gets plugged into an AC outlet inside, and everything just worked. We did have one problem with connectivity, and we didn't have the, the cable that runs from the satellite dish to the router plugged in fully, like fully seated into the router. So be sure that your plugs are plugged in fully to the router so the router sits flat on your table or wherever it is and not leaning one way or another. So within 10 minutes, we were up and running. So that was super nice. Another pro is the download speed. We got anywhere from 80 megabits a second to 120, sometimes 130 megabits a second. Compared to our T-Mobile and especially our former Verizon MiFi device, that is a huge increase. However, the download speed is also a con and I'll talk about that later in the con section. But we're certainly getting much, much faster speeds than we're used to being out here in the Arizona desert with over 100 megabits a second on average. So that's always a good thing. I do a lot of podcasts online through Zoom and I had a podcast yesterday actually. It worked flawlessly, no skips, no buffering, no pixelation. So it worked great. So I'm really, really happy with that. And another pro, and this is something that you don't hear a lot about, but the range of the Starlink router is actually really impressive. I was able to walk 300 feet away from the router and still maintain connectivity and being able to browse the internet. 300 feet away, that is incredible. And our router is inside our cinder block house, our concrete block house. So that, that alone makes it tougher for signals to travel through. But this router was able to maintain communication with me over 300 feet away. If you are worried about where you're gonna place the router um, in respect to where you are going to be actually using the internet, you probably have a lot of flexibility there, at least I did out here. So the range of the router was a huge plus for me. And the last pro is the Starlink app. It's actually really useful. When we first set up the Starlink satellite dish, I used the obstruction finder, which is built straight into the app, where you just show your camera around the area where you think you're going to put your satellite dish. And then it'll survey the area. You just point the camera all around and in the sky so it gets gets to see where your satellite dish is and where the obstructions might be, like buildings and trees and things like that. And the app will tell you whether the place you're thinking about for your dish is a good place. Being out here in the middle of the desert, there's basically no trees and nothing. So we can put our satellite dish almost anywhere and it'll be a good place. But if you live in a, in a heavily wooded area or there's a lot of buildings around, that might be a little bit more complicated for you. So definitely use that obstruction finder when you set up your satellite dish. And Starlink's app will try to determine whether that place is gonna be a good place for your satellite dish. Another thing I like about the Starlink app is the outage detector, where it will detect when it loses communication from the, from the satellite dish on your property to the satellites in the sky. So whenever there's a mis miscommunication or just can't find a satellite, it will report that down for whatever reason, it will report all those outages so you could easily see them. Again, we don't have that problem because we don't have obstructions. So, so there's literally nothing between our satellite dish and the satellites. So we haven't had a lot of problems with that. So that's good. But if there are problems in your, your area, you'll be able to see all those outages straight from the Starlink app. So that's great. Those are the pros. So let's talk about the cons a minute. And I'm gonna start with the download speed. So I just said the download speed was a pro, but it's also a con, because we are getting between 80 and 120 megabits a second, and that's great. That's much faster than anything that we've tried. But it doesn't come close 
to some of the speed reports that I've seen online. People are getting like 200 megabits a second, 300 meg megabits a second, 400 megabits a second, and sometimes even faster than that. Out here, we haven't come anywhere close to that. It could be because we're close to the equator and you need more satellites around the equator because it's a larger geographic area that Starlink has to be able to cover. So, so that, that might have something to do with the fact that we're not getting faster speeds yet. So as Starlink launches more satellites, maybe it'll be faster in the future. I don't know. Um, but we're certainly not seeing those blazing fast speeds that some people are. It's a con that we're not getting those extremely fast speeds here in Arizona at least yet. The second con is the upload speeds are just flat slow. With every test that, that we ran, we averaged from between maybe three megabits a second to eight megabits a second upload. Now, a lot of people won't use upload, but we upload a lot of videos to YouTube, so that is your upload speed. The faster your upload, the faster you'll be able to, well, upload videos and other things to the internet. And I've heard this before from other uh, users where download speeds are great, upload speeds are not great. And I am definitely able to confirm that. In fact, we may even have faster upload speeds from our T-Mobile home internet connection than we do with Starlink. The upload speeds are not impressive at all. All. However, they, however it does work, we're able to upload at a reasonable speed, but it's certainly not fast. So if you do rely a lot on upload, then you might want to look at more asynchronous connections like fiber or something like that, even though it's certainly not available in all areas. The third con is there's no ethernet port on the router. I mean, come on, SpaceX, not even a single ethernet port. Yes, there is an ethernet adapter that you can buy for $25 where you will be able to plug in a couple ethernet cables and connect to your wireless router, but there's nothing built in. There's nothing that comes with it. That was stupid, SpaceX. You should at least have given us one ethernet port, but there's nothing. It's Wi-Fi or you're paying an extra $25 for an ethernet adapter. Yeah, I really wish SpaceX would have at least included one for us, but there's nothing. And the fourth con is the cost. It's $110 a month now, which is way more expensive than our T-Mobile internet, which was 50 bucks a month for unlimited data. Starlink is also unlimited data. It is faster, but it's also more than double the cost. Now, if you compare it to some cable and satellite and fiber connections, then it probably will be around the same cost for your monthly fee. But remember that there's also a $599 fee for the equipment. However, if you did put down a deposit for SpaceX, that cost drops a little bit. It's still almost 600 bucks if you're a new customer to buy the Starlink equipment and then you're paying 110 bucks a month. And according to the email I got from Starlink in March, if you did put down a deposit for Starlink earlier, that brings your equipment cost down to 549, although I've seen reports of people paying 569 for their equipment and quite frankly, we only paid 536 for our equipment. So the costs for the equipment are kind of all over the place, but they're still within about 50, 60 bucks of each other. So be prepared for an upfront investment and then that $110 a month fee for the service. So those are four positives and four negatives of Starlink. So overall, we are fans of the Starlink service, even though there are some things that we wish would be improved, like the ethernet port and things like that. But I mean, those are, those are relatively small things. This is a game changer. If you live in a rural area and you want internet and you have something that's slow like cellular, or maybe you have nothing, this is an absolute game changer. So that's it. Thanks for watching this video about Starlink and our setup. I will report back in a few weeks or maybe a few months with my impressions after using Starlink for a longer period of time, but this is just something initial after the, after the setup and we started using it for a few days. So far, so good. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.